Hello, this is Eric Cunningham again. We are on the uh, Steam Generator schedule one more time here. Um, if you remember from last time, we did some pretty basic stuff. Uh, all we did was add a, a series of activities to uh, existing WBS, and uh, pretty much this is, this is where, we, where we left off. You can see on the Gantt chart the activities themselves, uh, no relationships, uh, nothing scheduled, everything riding on the data date. Again, basic stuff. But we had to do that to get to the fun stuff here. Now, adding resources. Um, if you have a schedule with several hundred thousand activities you want to add resources, that gets time consuming if you just go onto the uh, detail screen down below such as this and throw in the resources that uh, that takes takes time so if you uh, build an activity table with the resource column here I'll, I'll show you how this works clear and grub we'll need a labor labor boom now show you on the activity detail that this worked Budget units, eight hours a day, max eight hours. Remaining units, or I'm sorry, budgeted units, 56. That's the duration of seven times eight hours, 56 hours. It works. Get rid of this. So, um, uh, let's say, uh, oh, you want it to, so let's, let's say you want to have a labor for every activity in here. I mean, that's, no matter what you're doing, you're going to need somebody, somebody around to help out. Very easy. Click here. Now, before you assign, you do your fill down. That was with the shift key and the uh, left mouse key. So we filled all this down. And we can assign. We have just assigned one labor to every activity in the schedule. Um, you can do the same thing again if you have a thousand activities. Let's uh, um, oh, let's put in a uh, machine operator here on that bring that over here. On the grade to level you need an operator. And we're going to do another final leveling of slabs. So let's hit the control key. Now we have two activities highlighted. Boom. We have just added a machine operator. You can see this. Bring, bring, if I bring that down a little bit. Okay. Um, coming down. Uh, let's build some forms. So you need a carpenter. Now uh, you're going to need a carpenter on these forms here. So let's, uh, with the control key, left click, add. We just added a carpenter to these two activities. Coming down through the uh, structural steel, you're going to need an iron worker. And you're going to need an iron worker, all of them, with the shift key. Left click, we've selected all of them. Highlight, or I'm sorry, they're highlighted, and we just assigned the iron worker. So, this uh, particular little schedule is completely 100% resource loaded. Going over to the uh, responsibility, which, if you remember, this is from an activity code. All activity codes can be handled the same. So let's do, uh, let's assign this to somebody. Again, the pop-up box showed up on my laptop monitor. We're going to put Renee Madison in charge here. So she's, she's taking care of that. Now, rather than do these one at a time, we can, uh, we can do a fill down after it was already assigned. Fill down. She's now running all the preliminary earthwork. Coming down here to the foundation, 
earthwork. And again, the pop-up box showed up on the laptop screen. Let's put Fred Mills in charge of uh, this, this activity here. Now the steel footers. Oh, let's put Jeff Lyons in charge of that one. Final leveling of slab. Let's give that back to uh, Renee. Now, um, again, I promised quick, so let's uh, let's do this a little bit quicker from now on. Coming down here, build the forms. The good form builder on our uh, roster here. Let's say it's Robert Franklin. So you assign him to this one. Now, control, click, right click on the mouse fill down. And we've just assigned him to the uh, second form building activity. The uh, rebar, uh, let's see, let's, uh, let's give that to um, Jeff Lyons again. But now uh, we want to, we want to make him in charge of this rebar down here too. So control, left click, so we have them both highlighted, and we do a fill down. Now we're just going to make one person in charge of the remainder of the work. Uh, oh, let's pick on uh, Robert Franklin again. Now we use the shift key. Boom. And we've just assigned responsibility activity code to every activity here. Now we still have all these activities sitting on the data date. Not a problem. Very quick. We select this one. And with the shift key, left click, we select all, select all the activities. Right click. Uh, we are looking for link activities. There we go. And notice, finish to start activities on the Gantt chart for every activity that was selected. So we'll just select one here. Schedule. I'll bring that over some more. Bring it over here. Schedule. Boom. And we have just scheduled this entire project with finish to start relationships. Uh, in real life, um, you'd go back and you'd, you'd change the uh, you change several of the pieces of logic, um, for example, start to start, finish to finish, and so forth. Um, oh, you could do this. Uh, let's let's start the excavations at the same time. Change that to a start to start. Reschedule. And you see those are start to start. Okay, running short on time, but I wanted to show you one more item here on the uh, color coding the Gantt chart to show to show activity codes. In this particular example, we're going to uh, we're going to um, give each responsible party their own color. So what we do, we add four bars. Okay, the top bar. That's Renee. And we have to we have to set up a filter here. I believe I've got some of these set up, maybe all of them. We'll modify it to, to look. That's not completely set up. I'm going to hit an R to, so we don't have to scroll through the whole alphabet. We want to get the uh, response, responsibility activity code right there. Equals. And that's Renee Madison. Boom. Okay. Um, and Mill's responsibility, 
Let's do him again. R responsibility equals bring this over. Mills. Uh, Lions. Whoops. Hit the R. Equals lines. Now I'm leaving somebody out here. I got lines, Madison Mills. Ah, oh, brain freeze here. Who am I leaving out? Yeah, we'll find him in a minute. So let's uh, let's click Renee's. Um, Filter, Renee Madison, and uh, let's give her a uh, let's give her a purple bar. Now I don't want to show these these other bars yet. They're for they're for the other responsible people. Just want to show you uh, what Renee's in charge of. Now, as you can see, the purple bars are here, here, here. And they show at a glance what Renee's working on. And so forth with uh, the rest of them. We have uh, lions. And the filter would be lions responsibility. We'll check that one. And let's give him a yellow bar. Um, now you can see how this is how this is fleshing out here. Uh, the yellow bars represent uh, Jeff Lyons' work. Now we have uh, of, uh, Frank um, Frank Mills, I believe it was. So we'll have a new bar. Mills. And this is probably the one without any... Ah, okay. Perfect, perfect. Already built. All we have to do is check it. And let's give him bright green. Done. So now everything that Mills is working on is shown in green. And this leaves us with the last guy. That is Robert Franklin. I forgot him. Again, I'm uh, showing this thing working on the fly here. So you can see how it is built. Okay, we have to add a new uh, a new uh, new filter. And this was for Franklin. Okay, we come here, R, spots, equals, bring this over, Robert Franklin, there we go, done. And we'll give him, oh, let's see. Let's give him a black bar. And there we go. You have the entire Gantt chart color-coded for a responsible party. This ends the lesson, and uh, thank you for watching.